In this unit, we have been learning about lapis lazuli, which is a blue rock, colored blue by the mineral lazurite, most commonly, uh, but also mixed with various other components, uh, oftentimes calcite and pyrite, as you can see in this fragment here. Lapis lazuli is used for carvings, as a bluestone for carvings. It's also used as a pigment. Now, in contrast to ochres, which have been used as a widely av available, very low cost, uh, permanent type of pigments, the lapis lazuli has to go through quite a bit of processing in order to produce the pigment ultramarine. So uh, the various uh, other components in addition to the blue lazurite in the rock need to be removed by processing. The rock itself is much less common to begin with. Uh, and requires uh, some more extensive mining processes and then much more labor intensive, as you have seen, much more labor intensive processing in order to go from the raw material. As you see here, we have uh, some large fragments and some small chips and powder of the lapis lazuli itself to the variably processed and ultimately the blue ultramarine pigment that has been so prized throughout history. So uh, one of the, the major factors that of course comes into our study of uh, lapis lazuli as opposed to ochre, for example, is economic reality, economic reality for the artist. Um, Ultramarine, the pigment that came from lapis lazuli, was called ultramarine because it came from over the sea. Uh, so it came from far away. Uh, the, the raw material itself was an expensive import. And then as you saw in the, the video with Randy Asplund, uh, processing the lapis into ultramarine pigment, uh, it's a very painstaking process and only about two to four percent by volume of this stone actually becomes the purest best grade pigment and overall you only get about 10 percent by volume that turns in that that can be used for pigment and this is a vial of uh, ultramarine ash this is the lowest quality uh, of ultramarine derived from lapis lazuli, um, and it's still quite expensive. Um, but it's valued because it is a, a rich blue with a translucency uh, and sort of a sparkle to it. And you will have seen in some of the case studies the effect of this uh, ultramarine pigment with gold leaf behind it and that wonderful luminosity of it. Um, and of course, the most important figures in Renaissance paintings are the ones that have the greatest amount of this ultramarine pigment and contracts often stipulated by volume and also by ultramarine grade, how much would go in. For sculptures made of this stone, uh, it was still a very high status material. Um, and since it is relatively hard to work, remind me the hardness uh, scale of on this. Of lazurite? Yeah. Is, I think it's about a six or a seven. Okay, so it's, it's pretty hard, uh, close to what we encounter uh, later on with rock crystal, for example. Um, and so uh, early cylinder seals made out of this were... Uh, prize not only for how much more difficult it was to work, you had to have a more skilled artist working for a longer period of time, but also for this celestial blue color. And we find it being associated with the gods in uh, early mythology, um, and also with uh, very expensive luxury items throughout the ancient world.